Restaurants will be open for takeout only, but non-essential stores like bars and gyms will close effective midnight tonight. My name is Sharky Laguana. I am a small business owner. I own a company called Bandigo Van Rentals. It rents vans to uh, bands, actually, uh, the music industry. Uh, I am also uh, president of the San Francisco Small Business Commission. I was appointed by Mayor Breed in 2019. I'm a musician uh, and have worked as a professional musician. I was a major label recording artist in the 90s. came up in San Francisco, so I've played at most of the live venues as a performer. And of course, I've seen hundreds of shows um, over the years, and uh, I care very, very deeply about live entertainment. In fact, when I joined the commission, I said that I was uh, going to make a particular effort to pay attention to the arts and entertainment and make sure that those small businesses uh, receive the level of attention that I think they deserve. This is a constantly and rapidly changing situation, and we are working hard to be aggressive, to flatten the curve, to disrupt the spread of COVID-19. When the pandemic hit, it was uh, crystal clear to me that this was devastating to the entertainment community uh, because obviously live entertainment venues had to completely shut down, and there was no way for them to open for even a single day or in limited capacity. That hit me emotionally as an artist uh, and uh, hit me professionally as well as a small business that caters to artists. So I uh, was very deeply concerned about what the city could do to help the entertainment community. Uh, we knew we needed somebody to introduce some kind of legislation to get, get the ball rolling. And so we just started texting Supervisor Haney, just harassing him, um, saying, you need to do something, you need to do something. He's like, I know, I know, we need to do something, but what, what do we do? And so we tossed around a couple different ideas and uh, eventually we set up, settled on this idea that there would be a, a independent venue recovery fund. There are 11 eyes. Thank you, without objection, this ordinance is finally passed unanimously. And we were really concerned about these uh, small mom and pop independently owned venues that contribute so much to our arts and culture. We're a small venue, about um, 250 capacity, and we have the capacity to do all ages shows. Most of our staff has um, been working with us for um, over 10 years, you know, there's very little turnover in the staff. So we really feel like a family. Sharkey was, who is with the Office of Small Business, was instrumental in pestering, you know, Supervisor Haney and others to really keep our industry top of mind. We closed down on March 13th of 2020 when um, we heard that there was a, an order to do so by the mayor and we had a sold out show that night, I will we'll never forget. They were in the middle of their sound check and I had to call the club and say, pull the plug on this, feed the band and send them on their way. And the agent was like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I am because I, this is like a stage divey mosh pity kind of show. <laughs> The fund is for our live music and entertainment venues, and uh, in its first round, it will offer grants of at least $10,000 to qualifying venues. Uh, these are venues that offer a significant amount of live entertainment programming that were operating before the pandemic and that are committed to reopening and continuing to be live entertainment spaces after the pandemic. It's gonna just help kind of, you know, stave off the bleeding for a moment. You know, there's hundreds of thousand dollars of debt. And if the city can kind of contribute to helping to make sure these venues are around, 
to continue to be the heartbeat of the city and foundations for our economic recovery, it's, it's a huge step forward. When you think about the universe of events and venues in the city, we are talking about all of them. Some have been able to come back adaptively over the last year and have reopened in new capacities and have really been shape shifters in this pandemic. And that's exciting to see. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the day where events and venues can reopen and help drive the recovery here in San Francisco. They have done a study that says for every dollar of ticket sales that's spent in the city, $12 goes into neighboring businesses, you know, all of the associated businesses from, you know, our vendors to the restaurants that are next to our event, our, our venues, and just so many other things that you would not even think of, all of which have been so negatively affected by COVID. For this industry to fail is unthinkable on so many levels. It's unheard of, like San Francisco without its music scene would be a terribly dismal place. I don't know that there needs to be art welfare for artists. We just need to be able to live reasonably like human beings, pay our rent and, and pay for our food. And then I think uh, things could kind of take care of themselves. Now, given that that's not the situation, you know, I think that, um, what uh, what San Francisco could do that they don't seem to do very much is, um, you know, really do something to support these clubs and venues that have all these different artists performing in them. Actually, I think pre-COVID, it was kind of a, you know, don't have a warehouse party and don't, don't, don't do a gig, you know, don't go outside, don't do this and don't do that. There was a lot of don't, don't, don't. And then after the pandemic, they kind of realized we bring a lot of money into this city and we're a big reason why people are here. And so, you know, they, they need to really encourage and help these venues. And then, you know, as far as people like me, yeah, you know, it'd be nice if, if you didn't only get encouraged for singing opera or playing a violin. <laughs> Entertainment is a huge part of what uh, is going to make this city bounce back. Uh, we're going to need to have live music coming back and comedy and drag shows and uh, everything under the sun that is fun and creative um, in order to get smiles back on our faces and in order to get this city moving again. Venues serve a really vital function in society. There aren't many places where people from any walk of life, race, religion, sexuality, can come together in the same room and experience joy, right? Experience art, experience love, experience anything. That's what makes us human, our community, our connective tissues between uh, uh, different souls. If we were to lose all those, we were to lose these spaces, you're gonna lose this very vital uh, piece of society. And just coming out of the pandemic, I mean, you know, there's gonna help us recover socially, right? <laughs> you know, well, yeah, I need to be in the same room with a bunch of people. And then they're also gonna help the city and, and really across the country recover financially. San Francisco Music and Entertainment Recovery Fund, um... Amazing. It opened yesterday on April 21st. Applications are open through May 5th. Um, we're encouraging everyone in the coalition to apply. Um, there's very clear information on, on what's eligible. Um, but that's basically been what our coalition has been advocating for us from the beginning. You know, everyone's been supportive and, and they've all been hugely integral to this program getting off the ground. Um, you know, we found our champion with Supervisor Matt Haney from District 6, who introduced this legislation and pushed it into law. Mayor Breed dedicated a million and a half dollars to the fund. And then the budget committee, which Supervisor Haney chairs, he matched that as well. So there's three million dollars in this fund. As I said, the applications opened yesterday. So it's like a huge moment for our coalition. This is really what we've been fighting for all along. And one of the challenges for businesses since the beginning of the pandemic has been staying on top of all of the different programs that are available, their application windows, requirements, and deadlines. Um, at our website, 
for the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, OEWD org slash COVID-19. We're trying to, in real time, track all of the available programs. And if you need to speak to somebody, absolutely you can find contact information there for people who can help you navigate any of the available programs and resources. A lot of blind optimism has kept us afloat, you know, and um, there's been a lot of reason for despair. But this is what keeps me in the business and this is what keeps me um, fighting, you know, and, and continuing to advocate is that um, we need this. And this is like part of our, it's part of our lifeblood as much as like oxygen and food is. Don't lose heart. Look out there for all the various grants that are available to you. And some of them might be very slow to unroll and it might seem like too late, but um, you know what? Um, People are on your side and people are going to fight to keep their beloved venues open. And as a band, you're going to be okay.